Welcome to the Wasting Time podcast. I am your host, Chris, just here by myself today. So I'm just recording a very quick intro for the interview that Nick and I did with Charlotte Sands a couple of weeks back. She is about to be in the UK at the time of this recording. Recently released a single with Aaron Gillespie from Under Oath. If you haven't checked her out, check her out now. And here is the interview. Where, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee right now. Yeah, but I'm going to be in London in a couple of weeks. Have you, have you got much experience from the, with the UK? I was, I was looking through your Instagram and I could see like you were here a couple of years ago maybe, but I don't know if that was with work or just like a personal trip or something. Yeah, that was just um, for fun. I was actually supposed to only be in Ireland and then okay. we had a random two days where we didn't have anything planned. And so I just booked a random flight to London and was there for a couple of nights and it was like my favorite city I've ever been. Oh, nice. Where did you get to when you were there? Um, well, actually, we act- we were at a hostel in like Elephant and Castle, which was like a very random place to stay, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then I accidentally fell asleep at like a park in front of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> and um, I was like, I think this is better than my hostel. But we, I loved it so much. I, I completely forget where we were. Um, but I was at one point we were definitely in like the main like shopping area. It's been so long, but very random. I had no idea where to go or where to visit, so I was just like exploring. Nice. Well, I guess how we do these things, Charlotte, we kind of do a little bit of a, I guess, a chronological kind of look at your journey into music and kind of where you grew up um, to kind of where you are now, and we can talk about some of your releases. Obviously, you show coming up in the or two shows in the UK coming up yeah um so yeah I guess you're not you weren't born and bred in Nashville right you were born in Boston yeah right outside of Boston um is where I was raised and where I grew up and then I moved to Nashville um in 2014 so tell us a little bit about kind of growing up in in Boston and kind of you know your early introduction to music which led you to kind of I guess becoming a singer, a musician, a songwriter? Yeah. Um, so I grew up um, in like Western Massachusetts um, until I was about 12 years old. And I was, it's a very um, eclectic, very hippie type of area when I was living there. And it was a lot of folk artists and a lot of painters and singer songwriters. And at the time I thought I had a very normal like upbringing and I had a very normal childhood just being around musicians and all this kind of music all the time, but I realized that is not the case. Um, but I grew up on artists like Bonnie Raitt and Sean Colvin and Cheryl Crow, Grace Potter, um, Alanis Morissette, and like really incredible female songwriters and artists. And the core of it was very much like um, storytelling. And every single song was like had characters and it had locations and it had descriptions and um, it was just very descriptive, like lyricism. And, um, I just got so attached to that kind of songwriting. And so that's kind of how I started. I started playing guitar by just kind of ripping off other songs and learning other songs and then writing my own lyrics to them. And, um, which would now definitely be illegal. So don't do that. (laughs) But, um, you, you all, you learn in your own way. And then, um, I kind of, found out about Nashville when I was in high school. And I, that was the time when I started listening to music like All Time Low and Mayday Parade and The Main and We The Kings and um, Good Charlotte, all that kind of stuff. And um, I was like, how do I write music that can make my show, like these kind of shows of these bands, but still have this like lyricism and this quality of storytelling of these artists and these songwriters that I grew up listening to. And I've kind of forever been on the journey of trying to mesh those two things. And um, I moved to Nashville like a week after high school, just trying to find a place where I could kind of better my songwriting and my craft and write with other people. And um, yeah, and so I've been here ever since. And I've still just kind of been on that journey and trying to figure that out as well as possible. Wow. So, I mean, that that kind of move then, was it, I mean, how did that actually come about? How were you able to fac- facilitate that straight from high school? Did you, I don't know, were your parents supportive of that move? I, mean, I assume you were quite young at the time or? 
Yeah, I was like the youngest person in my class. So I think I was, I had just turned 18, like two weeks before I actually moved. Um, and I was really lucky to grow up with parents that were very supportive. They always knew that I would move the second I could. They always knew that I wasn't going to do anything other than music. Um, even if they wanted me to, there was like, there's no point in trying to push her in any other direction. But I definitely um, lied to get there. I told my parents I was going to be taking a gap year. I was like, hey, just let me borrow your car for a year. I'll be back in no time. Um, and so seven years later, here I am with a different car. But sorry, mom, um, that one broke down. <laughs> but She never got her car back. Um, and yeah, I've been here ever since. And they've always been supportive and wonderful to me about it. But I, I knew the second I got here that there was no other place that I wanted to be and there was no chance I was going to be going back home and all of that. So what what did you actually do when you landed in Nashville then? I mean, what, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, how did you embed yourself in that? I mean, was there anyone in particular that kind of that took you under their wing in the kind of, you know, the, those early days when you landed there? Yeah, I mean, Nashville is such a wonderful place, especially um, like that at that time, it was really all songwriters and just, um, there was a lot of country music. There wasn't a lot of any other type of music, but I, I've grown up, I loved country music just because it had that similarity of like the lyricism and that um, everything was about the song. Like the production didn't matter until like right before you were releasing it. That was like such an afterthought. And so I just loved the fact that every songwriter in every room only put emphasis on the story and like the quality and like the rhymes and the syllables. It was so interesting to me. Um, so I, I did a lot of like writer's rounds and I was usually the only person in a writer's round, which what, what that is, is like multiple people, usually with just like a guitar and usually just songwriters playing songs that they've either written for other artists or they're writing for themselves, but it's always a very stripped down kind of in the round um, one after another show. And, um, I did a lot of those just to showcase my music and to showcase my songs and, um, just to find other people to write with, to find other artists to write for. Um, and I loved it so much, but I always kind of had this weird feeling of like, this isn't where my songs are supposed to end. Like this isn't the way I want to perform. I want to perform and I want to, I want there to be more energy. I want there to be more of an interaction between the audience and the um, and me on stage and not just be like a performative thing. I want it to be engaging. And, um, I always felt like it fell kind of short of that. And so then I was like, okay, how do I create a show like that I want? And that was kind of like the next step yeah. for me. Okay. So th how, how did that come about? Did, did you kind of meet people in those writing rooms or had you just kind of made friends in the scene in, in Nashville to kind of like put together a band or did you start performing solo like how, how did that come how did that come about yeah so I I remember it so clearly I actually like posted on like a Facebook group um and I was like are there any because I was like I think I want to make pop music and at the time pop music was like you're either making pop music or you're making like country music in my mind and it was either like acoustic guitars or electric guitars like that's how it felt to me and I was like okay well if I want energy I need pop music so I I posted on a Facebook group that was like young entertainment producers or something in Nashville and um I was like are there any pop producers in Nashville and I remember getting random responses and ending up working with a bunch of random people trying to make music that never really felt like me, but it felt like I was getting closer. And I was like, okay, this isn't quite okay. it. Um, but it feels like I'm getting closer to where I want to be. I'm like getting warmer. Um, and then I remember like so distinctly, I remember going to a show and I saw a drummer there that was like standing up and clapping and screaming at the top of his lungs and was like, so engaging and I was like this is the coolest thing like this feels like the bands I grew up on and this is such an insane um experience and I walked outside and I called one of the producers I was working with at the time and I was like this drummer like I need this drummer I need something like this that has this kind of energy on stage and um like about a week or two later he was like, yeah, let me find somebody that's similar to this guy. I'll try and find someone in Nashville. And here in walks the same drummer who ended up to be 
now my current drummer, my producer on every song I've released and one of my best friends of all time, Dana and Reed. And that was kind of the start of my personal project at Charlotte Sands. Nice. Uh, Um, Yeah. Outside of your latest release, I mean, over the space of the last, um, what, three, four years, you've kind of released lots of singles throughout, throughout that time, kind of, how did that kind of manifest? And I mean, it, was it always an intention just to do to do to do it that way rather than kind of building up a um you know doing a full length at any point or, or is that more around kind of your view in terms of how music is released and consumed these days i mean what what, what was yeah i mean i definitely think that i was i realized a very long time ago that people weren't really consuming albums the way that they were i think as we all have noticed that people's attention span is a lot shorter. And um, even for shows, I think that people want more music faster at a, like they want to go home. They want it like they have phones, they have so much information all the time. It's hard for people to focus on one thing. And I tried to just go with the flow of that as much as I would love to create a full project. I also am somebody who honestly has always been very spur of the moment, moment, very like, Oh, I want to release this song tomorrow. And I want to release a song that sounds completely different in two weeks. And um, so I wasn't really upset about the single game that we are currently kind of all playing, which is releasing a ton of content and a ton of songs as fast as possible and um, a ton of videos and just a kind of as much as you can of everything instead of focusing an entire year plus on writing an album and then releasing it and hoping for the best. Um, and so I just started doing that. I started releasing every song that I loved and I started, it was, I think a song every four weeks was what I was doing for a little bit, um, which is crazy, but it was so fun for me because it's like, I got to kind of change as quickly as I wanted to as, and not feel this pressure of having to release a project that I wrote two years ago. Um, and it allowed for a lot of like personal growth and I didn't feel stuck in a certain genre or a certain brand. I was just able to kind of develop as my audience was and as I was as a person. It's funny. I'd, let, let's just jump forward a minute. And I'm trying yeah. in my head, like, how are we going to tackle this? Because I definitely want to talk about the, the latest EP a little bit. But so at the time that this comes out, you will have released a new single. Um, it's not out while we're recording this, but we have heard it. And it's cool. with uh, it's with the fella from Under Oath, isn't it? Um, do you want to yes. tell us a little bit about that and how that came about and stuff, and how 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 you're feeling about that song? Because like it's it's a different kind of sound to the EP, I think, a little bit. So absolutely, and it's a perfect example of what I was saying. Like, there's so much genre is not something I've ever really been interested in. I've always just kind of been like, this feels right right now. And this song with Aaron Gillespie from Under Oath is. Um, a perfect example of that it's just I we wrote this song together he came to Nashville for a writer's trip and we instantly became like best friends and he's one of the most wonderful incredible like people I've ever met and just an insane artist and writer and singer and drummer all the above and um we kind of made this song um called out of my head that is a blend of me as an artist versus a place where I didn't know that I could go as an artist yet. And also him um, inspiring so much of the writing and kind of pushing me to this place that I didn't know that I could go, you know, and we, it was a very collaborative thing with Danan, um, my drummer and producer, whatever uh, friend. And um, it was this really cool thing because it was kind of, me being such a fan of like evanescence and a fan of um these kind of harder sounding um like rock bands alt bands and then um uh, like his influence him recording live drums on the entire song and um us all on zoom (laughs) recording drums which is a very interesting experience um very 2022 of us but um yeah, and it's just really wonderful. It's it's very different than anything I've done, and it's a lot um, more hardcore than anything I've ever done, even though to hardcore fans, it's probably very soft. But um, I I really enjoy doing it, and it's definitely different, and it's very exciting that it's coming out, or it's going to be out. So I, I hope people like it. <laughs> when, when exactly is that landing? Do you know? 
Um, I think that song comes out on the 13th of May. Yeah, it does. And as I was saying, Nick, it'll be it'll be out now for the listener because because yeah, this this will be out after then. Uh, were, were you a big Under Oath fan like prior to that? So was it? And if so, so was must have been weird working with him. Yeah, it was, it's actually a really funny story. I didn't. Um, I'd be lying if I said I was a huge Under Oath fan because I didn't listen to a lot of um, like hardcore post kind of stuff. Um, and yeah. I do now, I kind of actually fell into that world around the age of like 20. Um, and I, it's all I would listen to. For, I would listen to like more of like a day to remember and that kind of stuff. Um, and I, it was funny. We got asked to do this session with Aaron and I looked him up and was like, oh, this guy is so sick. Like he is so cool. And I remember asking Dana and being like, hey, do you want to do a session with me and Aaron Gillespie? And he was like, Aaron Gillespie is why I started drumming. He's my favorite drummer of all time. Like that is why he became a drummer. And it's, I also never realized that the only poster that Dana ever had in his studio was an under a poster. Okay. So we had this session and Dana called me right before the session started and was like, should I take the poster down? Like, is this weird to have in here? And I was like, no, dude, you have to keep it up. You have to have the poster in there. That's so sick. And then, of course, Aaron walked in and was like, cool poster. <laughs> it was like so casual about it. Um, and then it's just like such a such a small world. And um, we all just had such a wonderful time. But yeah, that's like Danan's idol and has been his like biggest influence since he was he was doing Under Oath covers on YouTube and he was like 12 years old. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Holding back fanboy in too much then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, I think it's really cool that that you've you've done a song with such a high profile person. But like, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I was an Under Oath fan. Like, nothing against them; it's just not not my vibe at all. Which yeah. I think on that note, let's let's let let's transfer over to um, something that was more up my street that you did a couple of months ago. I wonder if this is like the first time you're on my radar. But you you did you released a single with one of our former guests, uh, John from the Main, and. Uh, the guy from Taking Back Sunday. That I mean, yeah. That that must have that was huge for you, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was just a crazy experience because I I grew up listening to the Main. They were in like my favorite bands I've ever like known. I grew up. I was in high yeah. school listening to them. Um, and so being able to, for them to like ask me to do a song with them was absolutely like, unreal. Um, I agreed to do the song before I even listened to it, and then. Sure. I listened to the song and um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I had no idea that there was another feature on it. So at that time, I thought it was just me in the main. And then I listened to the song yeah, and I was which like, is oh, huge this enough. Is... <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And then I listened to the song and was like, oh, this has like a really cool Taking Back Sunday feel. Like I really <laughs> like where they're going in this direction. <laughs> um, and then we hopped on the phone to kind of talk about where I, they wanted me to sing, what parts they wanted me to sing. And at the very end of the phone call, John was like, yeah, and then just leave room for Adam's part and then blah, 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 blah. And I remember being like, Adam's part? Who's, there's no Adam in the main. And then I was like, oh my God, it's Adam Lazar. <laughs> and I casually was just like, yep, yeah, absolutely, will do. And I hung up and called everybody I knew and was like, you won't believe this. Um and I still feel that way. Every single time I listen to the song or anybody talks to me about it, I still feel like there's no way that happens. How, how, how did you end up on their on their radar in the first place? I mean, how did you end up getting getting that call? So I played Sad Summerfest last year, last summer, um, with All Time Low and The Main and um, Grayscale and a ton of really cool bands. And they did... Um, I think like 10 plus dates, but I was on like five of them. And I honestly, I found out 24 hours in advance. They needed someone to fill a slot because somebody got sick on the tour, one of the opening bands. And they were like, can you be in Massachusetts in 18 hours? And I was like, well, it's 18 hours away from here, but yes. <laughs> um, and we had 30 minutes to give them notice and we drove and because of that tour, I was able to meet all the guys from the main and 
get on their radar. And then um, that's how I got the tour with them. And that's how I got the song with them. And our, our friendship kind of started there. And so I'm very grateful I said yes to that. I bet. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I guess from like a pandemic perspective, I guess before pan- pre pandemic, you were still kind of finding your feet in Nashville a bit doing local shows at what point did it go from coming out of the pandemic and you're doing gigs with the main you're doing gigs with young blood you do you know you're doing these huge cap um gigs yeah. right i mean i mean how did that transition for you and like i guess how did you deal with that transition yeah i mean it was really strange because i had never toured before so Um, I had played a ton of shows and in Nashville, I think I played almost 40 shows in 2019. Um, and I have always been a performer in the sense that that's always been my main goal. I wanted to perform the songs I wrote. I didn't want to just release music and then sit behind my computer and write more. I wanted to perform the songs. And so the, I think two weeks before the world shut down because of COVID, I had my first headlining show in Nashville ever. And we sold out. Um, a venue called the High Watt. And it was a huge deal for me because I was like, I didn't even expect to sell 70 tickets to this thing. And we sold it out. And I was right after that supposed to do an East Coast run and a West Coast run and start touring for the first time ever. And then we obviously were unable to do that. And, um, And then I think during the pandemic, I just genuinely, this sounds so cliche, but I the only thing that brings me like hope and like positivity and makes me feel better is writing music and releasing music. And that's, that was my only way to interact with people during those two years. And so I would just release as much music as possible. Um, and I was, it was my only way to like stay in touch with people and kind of feel like I was still relevant as an artist, even to myself. And so I just kept releasing music and writing it. And I felt like a lot of people, stopped and so i think i was able to have an upper hand in some ways because i had constant content and and found ways to make content by myself found ways to record my vocals and do everything myself and i just didn't let it kind of halt my creative process um and obviously a lot of people had really unfortunate situations and i was very very lucky to be able to have um like a sustainable career at that point where I was able to do that. But yeah. it was like, I just took the opportunity as like, okay, I have two years of artist development. Let's take advantage of it and let's do it. And so then I, I mean, the big thing that happened during COVID was my song dress, which I like was not on TikTok. TikTok I just said TikTok. Um, I was not on TikTok at the time. And I was not somebody who wanted to be a social media artist and influencer. I was very much like, that is not my thing. Um, but my management was like, you should just try it, see what happens. And I was like, I'll try it, mm-hmm. but only once. And then I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. And of course, I posted a video using my song dress and it blew up on TikTok. And now I have to... <laughs> keep that. <laughs> but um, I'm really grateful for that because it opened a lot of doors for me and it kind of co- took me to this next level that I was able to um, continuously do this during COVID and kind of keep me, keep a little progression throughout the last two years to where I am now. Um, I was just going to say um, your friendship with Youngblood started on TikTok. Is that right? A you a you out on TikTok? Yeah, I, I like to think that he's seen those videos, but I honestly don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, right. It's kind of funny. A lot of people have asked me and they're like, oh, that's how you got the Youngblood tour. And I'm like, no. I don't even know if he's seen those videos. And right. now it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> because now I know him personally. And I'm like, oh, no, what if he finds those now? You've got to, sh- <laughs> you've so got to show him, Shirley. You've got to show him that video. <laughs> I know. Because I'm. it's so funny. Like, I genuinely, in the video, I'm like, take me on tour. And then there's another video where the caption is take me on tour. But like, it's not like he never responded to those. His team never responded to those. It was very much like I got pitched for this tour and that was kind of, and they knew I was a huge fan. Um, I'm very vocal about how much I love young blood, but um, yeah, that was kind of, it's kind of weird. And now I'm like, should I take the video down? Is it too weird? (laughs) No, keep it. What was that tour like? It's part of the story. 
What was that talk? Um, so he's quite, he's quite, um, he's only an hour down the road from here in Doncaster, but um, he's quite a unique, energetic bloke, right? I mean, what's he like to, to tour with? Yeah, I mean, he's honestly just like embodies a rock star. He really is just so wonderful to be around. He's so respectful of everybody on the tour, every audience member. He has like this just wonderful energy around him all the time. And he's obviously like wild and um, is he's just so much himself. He's so authentically just 100% himself all the time. And I was really grateful to be on that tour because not only was he, did he create like an incredible environment for us as like me as an opener and coming to say hi to me every night and coming to talk to me about the show every night and giving me advice and um, stuff that most people do not do, especially for openers. Um, he also just created this insane environment in his audience of feeling safe and feeling accepted and just kind of feeling like yourself and feeling like you are okay to be yourself. And it was like this really, really um, incredible experience to be able to witness that and to witness people like visibly change in front of you every night when he got on stage and just feel so relaxed and feel so excited to be like in themselves and express themselves and it was just insane to watch and I felt so inspired by it every night and it definitely made me become a better performer and I was like there is no excuse for me to stand still on stage ever again <laughs> um and he's just he's so good he's so talented and yeah just all good things that's awesome um we I alluded to your recent EP before. Just a, a couple of questions I had on that, if, if that's cool. Um, yeah. First one was, so like my favorite song from it is that, forgive me, I forget what the opening song's called, but you'll know, obviously. Um, but that, that song really reminds me of, of like Quiet Drive. So I guess, I guess I was just curious. Do you know Quiet Drive yet? Has that band ever come across your radar before? I don't think and if so, so, are you a fan? I don't oh know man, they have. You, oh, that's funny. Maybe that's just like the us, you know, our difference in age because they're from like the kind of same scene as like all time low and stuff. But they kind of mm -hmm. they they had their moment in the mid two thousands and they still kind of exist, but they're just you know not as prominent these days. I think the singer like writes behind the scenes for a lot of bands. But do yourself a favor and check them out. It's Quiet Drive. I'm going word. to. Okay, hey, the guy has an incredible voice. <laughs> awesome um other thing i noticed uh little little boys like girls reference in one of the songs i think um did did they pick up on that has, has there been any word from their camp that like that they they knew about that have they acknowledged yeah. that um so danon who i wrote the song with um has been working with martin johnson for a while and oh um, okay it, yeah and it was it was funny because we wrote that song and we were just playing around with the bridge and we had already written a bridge and um, we were playing around with the chords. And as a joke, I just started singing like all the songs that could go to those chords. And oh, so I was see, just okay. singing like a bunch of random songs and we ended up, I ended up singing that one. And then we kind of looked at each other and I was like, we should send this to Martin like as a joke. <laughs> And, um, and then we ended up sending it to him and he was like, wait, is this serious? This is sick. And I was like, wait, this actually is kind of sick. Um, and that's <laughs> how it ended up happening was just, um, us just having fun and like doing it because we love the music obviously. And I'm a huge boys like girls fan, a huge Martin Johnson fan. And so I was just glad that he was like, cool with it. And then we just went from there yeah. and recorded it and. Now it's like my favorite song to perform live and it's my favorite moment of the show because everybody just sings that part back. And even if they don't know my music, they know that song and that's always really fun. Does that go all, I mean, your love for them go back to the, the Boston days? Because they're, they're a Boston band, right? Yeah, are they, absolutely. They, are, they still, are they still active or not? I don't know they are, are they? Are they still doing bits and bobs? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that, I think they're doing like When We Are Young fest and that kind of stuff so i think they're actually playing oh, okay. a few more shows yeah. um so i'm very excited to see them play are you going to when we are young yeah i'm definitely going to oh, amazing i'm gonna try and get on get in front of as many um of my favorite bands as possible and just hang out in the pit all day who's on the top like who are your top three that you want to check out at that festival 
Um, that's a great question. I mean, I know obviously the main are playing, so I'm very excited to be able to see them. Um, I'm trying you to must, think You of, must be bored of must be bored of their set. You've seen it so many times now. You would think. <laughs> you would think, <laughs> but joke. it's honestly like every single time is just like so unbelievable and so captivating. I'm I'm obsessed with them. Um obviously Paramore, that's a huge one for me. Um mm-hmm. Haley Williams is my idol and um i would say like day to remember bring me the horizon that okay. would be, that's, there's so many though it's like every single band on that lineup is a band that i like am have been a fan of since i was 14 years old so i i don't know how to yeah, see them all yeah. but i'm gonna try and find a way <laughs> so um obviously the you released love and other lies at the start of the year right um i guess all singles up until that point I mean, what, you know, what was the decision to kind of go in and do an EP and release a few together? And I guess what's been the the reaction and response to that? Yeah, I mean, um, it's definitely been interesting, like trying to release singles and stuff. And I think I just got to the point where I realized that all these songs had a common thread in my life. And at the time, it was very much... um, they're all different perspectives and different sides of my act of different relationships. So it's as different as they are and how different the stories are in every song. They're kind of all similar because they're about different viewpoints of my life. And I, and I liked that they all kind of together create me as at that time. And they told the story of who I was at the time of writing these songs. And um, there's kind of a song on there for everybody. And they, sound different and they I think sonically change a lot and um I just kind of I was excited to put something out where people could get multi sides of me instead of just one um and yeah and so I was I'm excited that I was able to do that and I think that people have been really receptive of it and um it's hard to tell your story in one song and it's hard to describe yourself in one song and this was kind of the first time I was able to give people multiple um, viewpoints, but it's been really wonderful. And I'm really glad that people have reacted the way that they have. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Nice. I suppose we should, um, we haven't really touched upon your upcoming uh, shows over here. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. You got two, two shows here. Is that right? Two shows, one headline show in Camden and then the small supporting some small band in Milton Keynes or something. <laughs> yeah, a tiny band. You've probably never heard of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm really excited because it's my technically like my second headline show ever of all time is going to be in okay. London, which is crazy. Um, and I'm so excited about that. I love London. I love my fans that I've reached out to me from London and just, it's just so insane that we're able to make that happen. Um, and mm-hmm. then also obviously opening for My Chemical Romance and a stadium is kind of insane. Um, That is wild. Um, I am so excited for that, and I'm just so grateful for that opportunity. So um, it's going to be a really wild week. Have you got got any other plans as well in in addition to those those two shows? Were you in and out within a a few days? We're only there for about five days. Um, So... We're going to try and get in and get out. And then we basically get back and have 24 hours. And then I'm playing three festivals in the U.S. in three days, in three different states. So I'm trying to, we had to get back right in time to be able to do that. Um, And so it's going to be a very interesting (laughs) few weeks. Oh, wow. And how did the, um, how did the My Chemical Romance thing come about? Was was that just, just your booking agent working Marvels? Like, was there... Did my chem like hear about you? What how did it, what happened? I like to think that my chem found me and was like, she's the perfect one for this. But most yeah. likely, <laughs> um, I'm guessing it was just me being um, one of the many people trying to get one of those shows, and thankfully, I'm just the one that they one of the people that they picked. They have different openers for every slot, and I think that's really cool that they're yeah. taking so many bands and so many different artists so i'm just grateful to be one of them nice cool so i mean you you've got new new single coming out with aaron gillespie of under Earth next week you've got um your dates in the uk in may 22nd 
of May with my comment romance in Milton Keynes headline show on the 24th in London. Um, what does the rest of the year look like for you after obviously all your, your U S shows as well? Yeah. I mean, I think the priority for this year is to keep releasing music and play as many shows as possible. I'm just so, I'm so happy to be able to play shows again that I think my priority is to really just get in front of the audience that I've been building over these last two years. Um, and so as many opportunities as I have to um, perform, I'm going to take it until I cannot live and um, just take advantage of all of it. But definitely more music, more music videos, more shows, and a lot of very exciting collaborations that I can't wait to come out. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask if there was any more of those coming. Okay. So there I'm, are. <laughs> uh, uh, keep in tight left on that then. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna. I know. I know you'll not be able to say anything, but let me try and press you a little bit. Is there any that's like on the level of like the the main Taking Back Sunday? Any that's kind of as big as that? Would you say, or is, is, can you not even yes. give that away? <laughs> oh, I'll okay. say yes. But here's the thing: okay. I think that so much of the, that kind of music, people can be such fans of certain bands and be like, I have no idea who boys like girls is and that kind of stuff. So I think it's all kind of per preference, but for okay. me, yeah. it is a collaboration on the same scale. Exciting. If that makes sense. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. But so I, I, okay. I think you'll feel the same. I hope so. <laughs> cool. Look forward okay. to it. I am definitely intrigued. <laughs> It'll be a good year. <laughs> it's hard to keep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, firstly, thanks so much for doing this, Charlotte. It's been it's been really nice. cool. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you over this way. Um, if we is is it cool? We just ask like a couple of sort of quick fire general questions. Is that is that of cool? Yeah. Um, I suppose this is well, it's not really a quick fire question. Sorry, Nick. I was going to say I didn't realize we were doing quick fire questions. You didn't prepare me for that. Yeah, I know. I didn't really give you a heads up on that. But this what this isn't really a quick fire question. This is just a genuine question. But um, what is what music like new music like? Who's impressed you recently? Oh, that's hard. Um, I am a huge fan of Bishop Briggs. I don't know if oh, yeah. you know who that is. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah. I think she has like she- one of the most insane vocals of anybody out right now. Um, so that's definitely somebody who I'm a huge fan of. And um, I'm trying to think of other, I'm like, I have so many artists that I listen to all the time that I, it's so hard to try and yeah. find anybody, I, but definitely her. I apologize. It's hard when you put on the spot, but yeah, Bishop Briggs, she's um, I think MDDN had, I don't know if she's still on MDDN's books, but I remember she was one of their artists. We've, we've had a couple of the MDDM guys on here before. Cool. I remember Josh Madden yeah. talking about her a lot. But yeah, like she seems like she's going to be a big star. Yeah, she's just a powerhouse. What was your other quick fire question, Chris? Oh, sorry. Um, Put you I th- on the spot now. I thought of this one. Yeah, no, fair enough. I thought of this one before. I was just, I was coming back from my run. And I was like, oh, what, what questions could we ask Charlotte that we haven't asked anyone before? And like, so, uh, t- Nick, you can tell me if this is a good or, or a bad question. But so of of these previous guests of ours, Charlotte, you, you can only keep the music of one of them. And then, it, like, you can't listen to the other three oh, no. ever again. You don't have to answer this if you, in case you don't want to offend people that you <laughs> no, may I'm ready. talk I'm or whatever. Ready. Okay. So I, I was going to include the, I'm not going to include the main because that's, okay. that's just that you're too close to them. Um, mm-hmm. So let's say. So. Okay, Sum 41, Frank Turner, Newfound Glory, The Men Singers. You can only keep the music of one of, one of them. That's honestly, for me, that's between like Newfound Glory and Sum 41. Um, okay. That's like always just watch me like the, all, either one of those bands listening being like, never mind. We're not, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> I... I would probably pick Sum 41. Really? I think okay. for me. Which is probably okay. weird, but I just, I, there's so many songs that have like core memories, I think. Yeah. For me, that if I don't, then I'm like, just erase those memories, you know? <laughs> See, I, I think Sum 41 are great and I really love them, but like my issue with them is like, I'm just not on board with their, 
you know, kind of metal kind of stuff. I kind of admire yes. it, but I just don't enjoy it. So I would have picked New No, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely I think that. Ivor is a fine choice. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Dave Brown sound from so Sum 41 is a very, very nice guy as well. Yeah, he's oh, awesome. That's good to know. There you go. Cool. Well, um, yeah, thanks for your time, Charlotte. And yeah, good luck with the shows and um, your trip to the UK. I hope you have a, a lovely time and I hope the sun shines here for you because it's not the moment. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for taking the time to talk. I appreciate it. Of course. Cool. Yeah, thank thanks, you so Charlotte. much. Yeah, Cheers. have All a good right. day. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, we'd love it if you could subscribe to us uh wherever you get your podcast whether that's itunes or spotify or stitcher or any, anywhere like that um also check us out on social media if, if you just search for wasting time podcast on instagram or twitter or facebook give us a like or a follow on any of those and also we love hearing from listeners as well so um, feel free anytime to drop us an email at the wasting time podcast at gmail.com or obviously you can message us on social media as well but um yeah we'll catch you next time for you to arrive